Hi, I'm Sierra Adibi, online training content developer at MathWorks. I'm here today with Graham Dudgeon, consultant product manager for electrical technology at MathWorks. Hi, Graham. Thanks for being here. Hey, Sierra. Great to be here. To get started, can you just tell us a little bit about your background and role at MathWorks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been at MathWorks for 20 years. In those 20 years, I've had three roles at MathWorks. I came in as a consultant engineer, so working specifically on customer projects on electrical technology across land, sea and air. I then moved to business development to build our business in the electric power industry. And I'm now product manager for electrical technology, which means I'm responsible for um, tools like Simscape Electrical. I've heard you describe electrification as a second industrial transformation. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? The first thing though is to tell you what the first transformation was. So around about 140 years ago was when the electric power grids started to be established globally, which had a profound impact on society, of course. We're now in the second transformation. You call that electrification, and that's the term that we typically use. But what we are seeing is the advancement and use of electrical technology across a number of industrial areas. Electric vehicles, electric aircraft, electric marine, you name it. Can you tell me about some of the long-term benefits of using electrified systems versus some of the combustion-based systems? It's globally agreed um, that the burning of fossil fuels creates greenhouse gas emissions. So there's the reduction of fossil fuels and this global need to do that. But there's also other benefits to using electrical technology. It leads to more innovative engineered systems. Um, you can get enhancements in engineering design. You can get enhancements in the flexibility of operation. And so what we see globally, increased integration of renewable energy um, onto the power grids, the increased use of power converters. Uh, the term given at the grid level is inverter-based resource. And the electric grids are moving to what you might call software-defined systems, where it's the software and the control and the management that's defining the overall operation. And it's a huge area of active research and active application as well. And then what are some of the challenges that we face as a society in transitioning away from fossil fuels to cleaner energy sources? The challenge of renewable energy, like solar and wind, is the time the power is produced very rarely matches up with the time that the power is consumed. So that has also created the need for storage, batteries being the main technology. Obviously that translates into some of what we're seeing in the electric vehicle industry. Electric transportation relies on storage. So there has been advancements in battery technology over the last 10 years, but also advancements in the way that you manage those systems. Broadly, it's called battery management. And it's not just about operating a battery to supply power or consume power. It's also about cooling those systems. I would imagine there's some opportunities in thermal modeling to kind of bring everything together. Yep, we've seen nearly an exponential rise in the interest in bringing fluid systems in with electrical systems. So you can do the, the cooling as well as the electrical operation as well. There's a lot of interest right now in artificial intelligence. Talk a little bit about how AI is used in electrification. With AI, I think we need to classify it two ways. In terms of generative AI, what MathWorks is doing, we have what's called the MATLAB AI chat playground. You can ask it questions, um, specifically around MATLAB code, code structures, and it will typically give you extremely good responses on how to efficiently write code for different types of application. The other AI application is the algorithms embedded within um, engineered systems. Machine learning and deep learning are used to forecast weather, to forecast energy demand, which is critical for secure operation of power grids. But we are also seeing AI being used to solve engineering problems which are difficult to solve using traditional methods. One example of that is if you have a complex power converter, potentially with thousands of different power electronic switches, and one fails, one, can you detect a failure? And two, do you know where that failure is? And that can be very difficult to do without instrumenting every single switch. And just on that point, simulation is, plays a key role here because you need to simulate those complex systems to get the data you need to then train the AI algorithms. We call it synthesized data, um, but it's a, a very important part of overall AI algorithm development. You mentioned simulation as a way to create models of systems. Can you tell me a little bit more about how Simulink and Simscape help engineers simulate and model electrified systems? Simulink is our core platform for dynamic simulation. Um, Simscape is our core platform for the simulation of physical systems. 
but you need both together. Simulink is extremely good at the control systems and Simscape is extremely good for the physical assets. Now, we see huge value in model-based design. And the philosophy of model-based design is to bring simulation in at early stages of technology development and use that model as you progress through your entire technology development cycle. You catch errors early on, before you've went to physical prototypes, more cost-effective, far, far more seamless design processes, better collaboration between teams. There's a number of benefits to using simulation as part of your technology development cycle. Sounds like that integration of Simulink and Simscape is really where the magic happens in terms of enabling things for engineers. It absolutely is. It's the full system simulation which is critical here. When both come together, that's when the magic happens. To close, I'm wondering if you have any advice that you can share with either new grads or um, established professionals as to how they can get involved in electrification. So electrification is not going away. It's one of the biggest uh, mega trends right now globally. There is always room for innovative thinking, especially with all the challenges that are still out there. And from MathWorks perspective, one way in which we help um, students and early um, career professionals um, prepare is we offer different types of training. We have on-ramps, for example, in a number of areas which you can take online. You are using the simulation models to learn the discipline like power systems. It's a highly motivating experience being able to get that feedback from what you're doing. You're learning the disciplines, you're learning software, and because it's MathWorks, you're learning software that is used in industry. What other ways are there for staying up to date in terms of the technology and the, and the tools? MathWorks is actively collaborating with academic institutions to develop MOOCs, which are available on Coursera and edX. And the key to the MOOCs as well is we continually refresh the content. So as technologies and disciplines are developing, you can stay up to date and current to prepare yourself for um, you know, your career as a scientist or engineer. Graham, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate your time and insight and expertise. No problem. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.